Hi, I'm Camille, and I love sculpting. Perhaps you've never tried sculpting before, or perhaps you have. Polymer clay is so versatile, and there are a lot of different kinds out there. And some are better for certain projects than others, and I'd like to give you an idea of kind of what's out there. And then I'd also like to show you the different kinds of sculpting tools that I like to use. Here are a few of the clays that I find easiest to work with. My favorite by far is Primo, and it comes in all kinds of different colors. There's you know, gold and green and things. And something that is sort of like it is Fimo Soft. And Fimo comes in a classic form that is very hard. And you can use it for making canes, but it's too hard for sculpting, for me anyway. So I prefer the Fimo Soft or Primo. You can also get Sculpey too. It's pretty similar to both, but I think Primo and Fimo come in more colors. And Super Sculpey is great if you are planning to paint it afterwards. It either comes in kind of a pinkish beige color or a more firm gray color. And both are great for different things. I personally prefer the gray because I kind of, I like the the sharp edges it gives you, but if you want more smooth organic shapes, the beige kind, which is the softer kind, is the way to go. Then there are two very light clays that will actually float in water. One is Sculpey Ultra Light, and the other is Sculpey Pluffy, and I can't seem to find the difference between these two. You can mix them both with the color clay to kind of tint them, because they start out as white. And they're a little bit more difficult to work with because they're kind of the consistency of marshmallow fluff, especially if you're working in a warm room. It can get really sticky. <laughs> and here's another interesting kind of product that I've found use for. It's really crumbly, even after it's been conditioned. And conditioning just means warming up the clay by working with it with your hands and getting it ready to sculpt with. If you just took it right out of the package and started sculpting with it, it would more likely just kind of crumble as you as you mess with it. But this kind is called Sculpey Super Flex or Bacon Bend. And although it is more difficult to work with, it is really nice if you need to make a really thin piece that will need to flex after it's been baked. And then there are the liquid Sculpeys or liquid polymers. This one is Translucent Liquid Sculpey, and you can find this easily in the art clay aisle. And it looks like glue, and you can use it kind of like glue. Once it bakes, it's kind of transparent, and it's a little um, uh, stretchy too. But it's nice for joining two pieces together that you don't want to smash together, especially if they're really detailed. And then this is Kato Liquid Polyclay, and I bought this online. And it's great for, for different polymer effects. You can tint it with oil paints or alcohol inks. Anything that's got an oil base, not a, um, not a water base. You wouldn't want to use acrylics with this. And once you bake it, it's entirely clear. And sometimes it can have a glass-like finish. It's great for faux ceramic work and faux opal work. And I'll show you a few examples of those two techniques. And these are my four most used sculpting tools. They're great for all different kinds of techniques. This one is a color shaper tool, and it looks like a paintbrush, but it has a, a flexible silicone tip. It's great for making some soft lines and some delicate sculpting work. And it comes in a bunch of different, different sizes and tips. This one's more like a, a sharp chisel. And these are some tiny little ones that came in a set. They each have a different tip, a chisel, kind of a scoop shape, and a, a cone shape. They're really helpful. They can be a little pricey, but they last for many years. And uh, an X-Acto blade is great for making little precision cuts, and I use this for all different kinds of, of things. And then the next thing I use is a flexible craft blade. It's really sharp on one end, so always make sure you grab it from the right side. You can flex it around and make some different cuts with it. It's pretty helpful. I think it's called a tissue blade. 
and by far my most versatile tool is this large needle and I can kind of sculpt hands with it or you can make some uh, interesting little lines and um, just some really small detail work but those are my main tools that I use there are some cutters you can you can buy different shapes and and there are these little tiny punches they're called I think Kemper makes them and they look kind of like bullet casings but um, this one's like a teardrop shape and then there are some that are heart shape or circles they're really helpful too and then you can get some little flower cutters or um, <laughs> these pretty much come in any shape and then I also like to use um, little drill bits make some cool imprints in the clay and this one kind of makes a little star shape so you can really use anything you can make your own tools you can find them around the house the only things that don't work very well are certain kinds of plastic tools polymer clay will kind of eat into the plastic so <laughs> be careful what you set your unbaked clay pieces on